YouTube, YouTube, what up, what up? Listen, your boy been down and out, man. I messed around and caught COVID uh, right after Christmas, and it is January 23rd, man. This is really the first few days I've been feeling like myself. Uh, it, was, it was rough. So as y'all know, I've been running Brazilian amplifiers and uh, both of my vehicles forever, basically. And um, just want to try something out new for the bass. And so we're going to do a quick unboxing and I'm going to show y'all uh, what we're going to be uh, comparing uh, the subs to. So let me uh, get this box open and uh, we'll go through it. Alright, so sitting right here is something I had for probably a month now. Um, no, matter of fact, it came right after Christmas. Uh, like I said, I've been sick, so I ain't been able to get to it. But anyway, if you can see uh, from down for sound, uh, we're going to go ahead and open this up and see what we have item number one and we got this t-shirt lollipop vote meter lanyard uh down for sound sticker uh down for sound uh flyer and my invoice and as you can see Thanks, Michael. Paid $2.99 for this amp, and uh, that was uh, for Christmas or <clears throat> the December sale. Let's go ahead and get to what's in the box. So it was the JP23. Cord for the bass knob. That bad boy is big. Uh, so yeah, bass knob, power, protect, clip, temperature voltage all that so pretty nice all right so when i first seen it i thought it reminded me of my um old audio q22 aq2200 um but yeah you can see uh two power two ground for your speaker inputs zero gauge uh Positive and negative. Some Tiffany style RCA connectors. Uh, this will be the only one running master. Uh, we'll be running at a half ohms. So, <clears throat> all right, that's the amp. Let me show you uh, what we're gonna be comparing it against. All right, so of course this is going in the charger. We're gonna be comparing this to this little tiny thing right here. So this is the two ohm version md 3k from teraamps um so i have dual two sa12s sundowns and so what i'm going to do is wire them to a half ohm on the jp23 but let's just get size comparison for a second this is why i love brazilian amps this amp does rated power and it is less than half the size of that so this amp currently at two ohms and it does you know it's rated power at two ohms we're going to run it on the jp23 at a half ohm so i'm just going to switch the configuration uh in the subwoofers and should be good that's what i run on my mids and highs so this will never be you know a base car never get on a meter um this this car is all about mids but i got a little bass too so yeah, again, MD8K, and it's gonna be paired with the JP23 as a test. Right now I'm running the MD8K and the MD3K, and I got three AGM batteries under here. So it's gonna be a real test, uh, not scientific. Um, and what I mean by that is, I don't have, you know, 14 volts that's gonna be playing that. It's gonna be playing in the 12s, um, and I'll probably cap it off there. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I'm um, kind of limited. I can't add any more batteries to my car because I don't want to mess up with the stance of it. I love how it sits. So no batteries is going in there. Not quite sold on lithium just yet. So we're going to be playing to the voltage limits of the car. Probably not the full potential of these amplifiers. So let's go ahead and get a test. See how it sounds with the MD3K. We'll come through, flip everything, switch it out and see how it sounds with the JP23. All right, y'all, 
So here's the interesting thing. Um, my trunk is almost sealed off from the car. I said almost because somehow, so you can see that piece there. I lost the piece on that side. But anyway, I got a trunk lid in here. So it's not gonna be a lot of flex. Uh, my car don't flex at all, really. Um, so we just gonna have to see uh, how the video do. Uh, like I say, you ain't gonna really see no trunk flex. Uh, you might see a little bit of door flex. But um, we're gonna see. All right, YouTube, got to hit y'all with a voiceover. Unfortunately, a boy trying to stay monetized. So, um, let me just go ahead and, you know, while I'm walking around the car, I might let this play a little bit in the background. But as I'm walking around the car, again, this car is sealed up really good. Um, only thing really happens on this car, the doors, both front and back doors, are flex out pretty good. Um, that's really it. Don't have a sunroof, so you see all the crazy roof flex on chargers. It's usually because they got the sunroof. But uh, anyway, as I start getting into it here, uh, man, the, the 3K to me has been great. This is not a smart 3K. The smart 3K wasn't available. Um, I had this amp for a while now, so the smart 3K wasn't out um, at the time that I bought this. But it will not benefit me really at all for base-wise because my starting arm load is 2 ohms. Um, and the Smart 3 makes the same power 1 and 2 ohms. So it doesn't benefit me. The Smart 3 doesn't make any more power at 2 ohms than a regular MD 3K 2 ohm version. Um, but I beat this amp to death, y'all. And it just works. It's never protected on me. And when I say I beat this thing, I ran it into clipping. I ran it to both the clip light and the red light flash. And I do that because this is my personal vehicle. The people that, you know, all my customers, I will never, and I tell them, I'm not going to run your stuff as hard as I run mine because, yeah, you know, if something was happening to my amp, oh, well, this is not a base car anyway. This is, car's all about mids. But, again, this thing has survived horrendous abuse. And um, I'll show y'all a text message at the end when I got back home after this, uh, shooting this clip, sent to my boys like, yo, this, I, I don't think it's no way that this amp is going to be, I mean, the other amp is going to be as loud as this tar amp. Uh, but anyway, like I said, you can see just a little bit of flex here. Again, just the way my car is made and the way I have it sealed off, you're just not going to see much for flex. But again, nothing against tar amp. It's been great to me. Uh, I bought this amp for 220 bucks a few years back. So, um, you know, you can't really go wrong with it. Uh, and again, I'm not sponsored in any way from Tar Amp or from Dial for Sound. This is just my personal opinion. Why you gotta, uh, you know, take my opinion? Well, I don't know. I've been doing audio now for over 10 years. You can look at my Instagram, see stuff that I built. I got a pretty good opinion, and I know what I'm doing. So, um, you know, I mean, that's really it. Now, here's the text messages I sent to my homeboys. So, pretty sure no way this new amp would be better. <laughs> Either that or I ain't heard bass in a while is basically what it's saying. Alright, y'all. So, I pretty much got everything switched out. Power ground, remote hooked up. Um, I'm about to set the amp with the DD1. This is the old school DD1. So, I do myself the right way. <clears throat> um, and then I'll get it in here nice and neat. It's going to barely fit. But, um, yeah. So, DD1 hooked up. Ready to go ahead and set the gains. Uh, of course, I use a DSP, so not worry about the crossover. I'm um, just going to open it up on my phone and do the DD1 stuff, and yeah, we'll be good. All right, all right, y'all. So, um, I got stuff hooked up, about to turn it on for the first time and turn it down. All right, all right, y'all. What up, what up? So GoPro lost the footage of the JP23 uh, video. Um, so anyway, we're gonna go reshoot, the, reshoot that again. Um, and I'm gonna give you my thoughts on it. And uh, I'm gonna get back to the house. So anyway, head to the uh, little spot where I play my videos, or play my music. And um, yeah. The noise, the life that I live to over my soul. All right, y'all, we back with the JP23 now. And uh, once this gets to plan, I'm gonna tell you immediately, I noticed a much deeper bass response on the low end. I mean, this amp just, 
it sounds good playing the lows. You can see that my voltage is 12.5, which is consistent with the tar amp. Um, so it sounds like we're pulling about the same current. And the crossovers are the same. Again, I got a DSP. So the crossover didn't change, and this amp just has a ton more low-end output. Um, for price, again, I paid $299 for this amp versus about $220 for the TAR amp. Both are great choices. Like I said, that TAR amp has survived some abuse. This amp, I don't really know now uh, about how it's going to do for longevity. But as of right now, this amp walks away from the TAR amp um, for how I have it wired. Um, I mean, I just told everybody, it feels like I got a brand new car for how this this it sounds right now. Um, I think it's well worth the price. Now this amp has went up. So now we're talking about a $100 price difference. Uh, so, you know, it, it makes it a little harder, but I still would choose this amp just from the way it handles the lows. Uh, so, um, great choice. I'm very satisfied.